Hello YouTubers, it's Valentine's Day 2015 and uh, I normally don't do this but I tell you I was, I've tried to make this video once today and it just totally shut off, it's never done that before so just a quick prayer here. Father, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, I ask that you uh, protect this video, protect me as I say it, that your perfect will would be done, Father. Plead your blood over it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, folks, uh, this is kind of a follow-up for my last video, which was all timelines point to September 15th, or 2015, September 23, 2015. A couple weeks ago, I had the author of Newton's Riddle. It's a great book, by the way. I'm going to plug it for him, Neil Russell. Um, he, we spoke for a couple hours, uh, at least close to a couple hours, and it was by divine appointment. I really can't get into all that right now. But his book is written in fiction form, uh, kind of like uh, This President Darkness by Frank Preddy, and really like the way Jesus, when he told parables, uh, he would tell a story to teach a truth. And that's what Neil has done in a very good page turner. If you get a chance, uh, this is definitely a must read for the times that we live in. <clears throat> he was talking about um, uh, a date that he had put in there a few years ago. Uh, and he had no idea that the date was important. And we'll get to that in just a second. Also, Steve Cooper, he's got a, a really good blog talk radio show and a website. And uh, we also spoke uh, just within the last couple weeks uh, about a program he had. Now, I don't want to take anything away, and neither did he, from the Tetrads, the four blood red moons that Mark Blitz discovered. There's no doubt at all, these are signs. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for signs um, that point to an event. What Steve had pointed out was that even though the four blood red moons definitely correlate with major things that have happened to the Israeli people uh, every time that they happen, they're not really scriptural. And he gave the example of uh, the Last Supper when Jesus sent the disciples in and he, he said find a man with a pitcher of water tell him we have need looking for the Last Supper the upper room he didn't call it the Last Supper he called it the Passover meal it just turned out to be the Last Supper but point being the sign was not look for a man the sign was not look for a pitcher of water the sign was look for a man with a pitcher of water and like Acts and Joel say before the great and terrible day of the Lord, the moon will be darkened and the sun will be darkened and the moon will turn to blood. It's, it's the two of these events. Now, you can only have a total solar eclipse at the beginning of a month when you have a, a new moon. And you can only have a blood red moon in the middle of the month, around the 15th, when it's a full moon. So for those two events, a darkened sun and a blood red moon to happen simultaneously, that means within a two-week period. Well, if you go to NASA.gov, you can look from 1000 BC to 3000 AD, and over a 4,000-year period of a time, this event will only happen one time. And that is this coming March 20th, 2015. Now, back to Neil Russell, who wrote uh, the book on Newton's Riddle, in his story, he uses the date March 20th as a date that the New Madrid fault line is going to have a major earthquake. Now, he wanted to tell me several times, and did, that he in no way, shape, or form is saying the New Madrid fault line is going to have its earthquake on that day. But he found it very strange that that was the day out of 365 days that's the one day that he picked, and then later he finds out that it's, it's a major sign. And when he did, he had a day vision. And uh, people who have listened to any of my stuff realize how I don't put very much stock into visions and dreams, especially dreams, because when someone's in a dream state, it's, it's really, you know, i got to leave that between them and the Lord. But a day vision's a little bit different. And I know a couple people 
who I totally trust, my own mother, for instance, who has had a couple day visions where you're just going along normal and all of a sudden, bam, you're having a vision. Well, his vision was of the New Madrid earthquake. And as a scientist, he went on to tell me how that there are three types of earthquakes, the type that roll in waves, the type that move side by side, and the type that move up and down. And this one, he said it definitely moved up and down. He saw cities like St. Louis, um, Memphis, you know, it, it's going to be a bad one, folks. It's going to be a bad one. But when we're talking about dates, now we're talking about this coming date, and it happens to fall right between, uh, in the center of the two blood red moons, the four blood red moons, two in the front, two behind. And it also happens to be uh, the vernal equinox that day when time is split day and night into exactly 12 hours apiece. And it happens to be a Sabbath uh, at 6 o'clock that day. So you've got the solar eclipse in the morning, the Sabbath at sundown, and the vernal equinox about quarter to 11 Eastern time. So a date to take a look at, folks. Um, but I think I've got enough time to touch on something else. And this is going to be very controversial. I have wrestled with the Lord for uh, months over this. I've cast lots, and, he, and he's told me, you know, don't hide your candle under a bushel. I mean, everything points that I, I need to at least say this teaching. And uh, it's on no man knows the day or the hour. Now, try to stay with me for nine minutes, folks, really. Uh, don't let your own preconceived teachings shut me off because it's important if you want to know the truth now no man knows the day or the hour you know you can name a date for something and even a sinner who has nothing to do with God ungodly he'll quote that at you but why not because it's not in the Bible Nowhere in the Bible does it say no man knows the day or the hour. It's like uh, godliness is next to cleanliness or God helps those who help themselves. Those are not in the Bible, folks. And neither is this. What it does say is that of that day and hour knoweth no man. Now you have to break that verse apart. Of the day and hour. Now, all through the, the Bible, Old and New Testament, it talks about the day, that day, the day of vengeance, the day of the Lord. All the times it mentions the day, it's talking about a particular time, which I believe is a one-year uh, event during the last three and a half years, the Great Tribulation, that day. It could be a literal day, I'm not sure, but we'll find out. <clears throat> of that day this scripture doesn't talk about when it talks about 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 that day and hour because it's going to be so terrible the events asteroids comets hitting uh, grass being burned up fish dying water destroyed I mean that no man knows it, it's going to be that serious no man can know of it but not when and if you look, let's even take it into a larger bit of context, because you need to get this teaching under your belt. If you're going to understand what's going on at the end times at all, if you continually have this piece of doubt in the back of your mind because you're hearing that ring in your ears, no man knows the day or the hour, oh, come on now. Knows the day or the hour about what? Let's just even say he is talking about an event. Well, what events would it be talking about? If you go to the beginning of the chapter, Jesus was telling about the temple and how it was going to be destroyed, and not one stone would be upon another. And so the disciples came to him privately and said, Lord, tell us of this, and of the sign of thy coming, and the end of the age. So that's what Matthew 24 is about the sign, not even about his coming, which is not the rapture either. It's about the sign of the coming. And I'm not sure about the second part. It could be and the sign of the end of the age or the end of the age. 
doesn't matter. <clears throat> There's a difference between the rapture and his coming. The second coming, he comes to earth. He literally lands on the planet with his feet. The rapture is the great mystery Paul talks about. We're caught up to meet him in the air. And so it, it's not even about the rapture. Even if it was, no man could know the day or the hour of the event. It wouldn't be about the rapture. Matter of fact, it's just the opposite. Because, And this is where I started on my trick at this teaching because I couldn't understand how everybody wanted to believe this truth that no man knows the day or the hour with one verse when there were so many other verses that taught differently in Thessalonians when he talks about him coming as a thief in the night which is the rapture because it's not going to be a thief in the night when he comes in the air every eye is going to see him he's going to be, you're going to know he's coming but as a thief in the night but you my children are not of the night you are of the light you will know when he's coming revelation 3 3 if you don't watch i'll come like a thief in the night in other words if you do watch he won't come like a thief if the good men of the house would have watched he would not have suffered his house to be broken you've got all these scriptures that why would you watch for something that you can't know daniel even gives you day counts 1260 1290 1335 when you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place where it ought not stand, we know that it's 1260 days later to the second coming. He even tells you to the day. Look for an event, then you'll know how long to the second coming. Folks, 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 please do the research yourself. Be as the Bereans. Boy, am I going to get chastised for this one. But you know what? I don't have to answer to you. I answer to... A higher power and I'm responsible for what I know to get that out there so folks this is it we're in it and you're not gonna be uh, able to skid by because you can say I didn't know my people perish for a lack of knowledge you have to know you're commanded to know you know the first time he came there was a day count from the time to rebuild Jerusalem and it was right on target and he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey and he said oh he was so heartbroken if they would have only known the day of my appearance it would have it just would have been so much different don't be caught up like the rest of the religious world was caught back then because we have something they didn't have back then. If you're a born-again believer, you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. And if you seek, you shall find. If you really want to know, you'll know. But you have to be willing to set aside teachings that you've been taught for the truth. Because it will set you free. Folks, we have uh, these signs all coming together. Uh, June 7th, 1967, Daniel said it's going to be 49 years. And when you count forward, it's exactly 17,640 days to September 23rd, 2015. This is the beginning of the Jubilee, the last Jubilee. You know, I've uh, here's all the Jubilees. Take a picture of this. This is all the Jubilees going back to when Moses took him into the Promised Land. Take a picture of that. Study those. They're 49 years apart. There was only going to be 70 of them. This is the 70th one. It's the last Jubilee. Actually, and there's if they were counting Jubilees before then, there would be 120 or 6,000 years. And you go into the teachings in Peter... Uh, about you know, 6,000 years, a uh, day is 1,000 years, six days, the seventh day is the day of rest, that's the millennial reign. Oh, folks, my heart is heavy. If you don't know him, just repeat after me, Father, I know I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins in the name of Jesus. Jesus, come into my heart. 
Help me to do what's right so that I will be able to stand for what's about to come and be worthy to escape the wrath that you're about to pour out on this planet, Father. We know this is the last generation. The sign, the big sign, was when Israel became a nation that this generation would see all these things come to pass, Father. I'm now willing to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, folks.